Hi guys, welcome back to We Should Talk, a pop culture interview series from In The Now. I'm your host, Gibson Johns, and today on the podcast we have Sam Fair from Summer House, one of three new additions to this season. Uh, and I think Sam's been great, and it, it seems like from the mid-season trailer and from what we talked about in this interview that Sam's going to have more sort of breakout moments in this back half of the season. But I really love her energy, and I love getting some time with her because, you know, sometimes I get the opportunity to interview newbies at the beginning of a season, their first season, and there's, there's really not that much to say other than just, like, introducing them and asking about their background, which... It's interesting, but you know, you want to hear about their time on the show. So I feel like at this point, there's some stuff for us to sink our teeth into. You know, Sam and Gabby were fast friends as the two women that came in together, um, and they're still really, really, like, essentially best friends. And um, they were able to navigate this group in a really, really kind of shrewd way because they're able to, you know, have these friendships with Danielle and Lindsay, despite, you know, they came into the season still best friends, and then they have their falling out. There's a big divide that happens. And, you know, Gabby and Sam were able to work both sides, and I think in a really genuine way. Um, so her her perspective on that whole situation was really pertinent, and so we talked a lot about that. Um, also her friendship with Gabby and why that connection is so strong. And then also she weighed in on, you know, Gabby and Sierra's kind of tense situation of like really not being able to connect so far and sort of why that is, whether Sam felt that same way with Sierra, and sort of we talked through that a little bit. And then, you know, I think one of Sam's first Big, not big moments, but one of the, sort of the moments that kind of stayed top of mind with her from this first half of the season was when Maya pulled her aside off camera, but there was still a hot mic, so we got to hear it, um, to tell her that she, like, to sort of give her some feedback about how she talks a lot. I read it as well-meaning and sort of just try, her trying to get, sort of, like, give her some advice and sort of warn her. Um, I think some people online didn't take it that way, but Sam definitely took it that way. Um, so it was interesting to hear about that from her. And then, you know, it, it, as the mid-season trailer shows us, Corey from Winterhouse shows up and Sam and him hit it off, to say the least. And they're actually still dating now. So we talked a lot about that instant connection that they had, why it was so great, and, you know, how it's going now, which it seems to be going really well. And so we have another couple to to, to be obsessed with. Um, so, yeah, Sam is really great, and I think that she has a lot of promise as a reality star. She's super open. She's super candid. Um, and she's and she's fun to watch on TV. So keep listening for my interview with Sam Fair from Summer House. Tune into Summer House on Mondays at 9 p.m. on Bravo. And please rate, review, and subscribe to We Should Talk on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, so we are here with Sam Fair from Summer House, one of the three new additions to the show this season. Sam, it's been great watching you so far. You're 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 you're, you're a showstopper. You're great. You're a good addition to this house. How's it going? How, how's this experience so far for you? Well, thank you for saying that because I will say it is a little bit cringy to watch yourself do stuff on TV. Like, yep. you know, you always see videos of yourself when you're like talking to your camera or like on FaceTime, but seeing yourself completely unfiltered out of body is a whole other level. Um, so I will say it's really fun. Like I've gotten to meet a lot of great people and like do really cool things as a result of this, but that is the weirdest part of all of it. Mm -hmm, definitely. And so I was doing, I did a little bit of a deep dive on you before this interview and, and some, some old Cosmo videos came up of you when you were an ex the assistant to the chief of, to the editor in chief of Cosmo yep. and you had a little video series, which was super fun, but I'm, and, and you were great on camera back then. And that was probably like, like that was several years ago. Was that your first big taste of sort of doing something on camera and did that whet your appetite for this? Or is this something you always sort of wanted to be doing in some capacity? So I was an actor as a child. So I am oh, definitely I a stranger okay. to the stage, to the to the cameras. Um, I have done a little bit of like hosting stuff, kind of like what Paige does. Um, so, you know, I've, and then I started doing like social media stuff. So I'm very used to like being around cameras and being around production and being on set. Um, but it, it is definitely an entirely different experience when you're expected to like, forget that's all there and just right. like go about your normal life. That's a very different experience. Honestly, one of the things that was most surprising to me about this summer was how quickly you get used to that. I mean, the first moment of me getting out of the car at this house, late at night on like a Friday, like to film for the very first time, I was like staring right at, like I'm getting out of the car and there's a camera right here. And I was like, <laughs> where do I look? That's not directly there. Totally. And then like literally by the next morning, you forget they're there and you find yourself doing something like really stupid. And you're like, Ugh, <laughs> dang it. It's so, also, there's also the hidden cameras in the rooms, which also complicate it as well. 
Yes. I mean, I will say like that you, you know that you're signing up for 24 seven surveillance, but watching that back is a whole different kind of crazy than, you know, watching the big cameras. Um, uh-huh. It's just, you really, really forget those are there and you're just doing your thing. And you're like, wow, all of America is watching me like change right now. <laughs> like that's it. <laughs> is there something that you've, that you've said or done yourself that when you watch it, you're like, you know, may- maybe next season I won't be t- doing something like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I will say sometimes I watch the episodes with my parents um, and uh, I should definitely learn to watch those before I yeah. watch them with my parents um, to prep myself. But, you know, the other day we saw the episode where we're at the winery and Kyle's like, what's the easiest orgasm you've ever had? And I just piped right up to let everybody know that I love it when a guy spits in my mouth and I'm sitting next to my dad, my poor dad. And he goes, that's so nice. And I'm like, you know what? Like at least they're good sports about it. I mean, I, I prepped them going into this. I was like, this is going to capture me when I'm drunk, when I'm sleeping, when I'm naked, when I'm clothed, when I'm dating, when I'm everything. And I was like, you know, I'm happy to like screen the episodes, but I'm very close with my parents. They're cool. They're young. They were like, they whatever. Get it. Like, right. Exactly. Crazy. So exactly. It's so funny that comment, that comment in particular, like people actually really love that you shared that too, because I think that like, there's this sort of craving this season. Cause there is so much like friendship OG drama. that's like, it's pretty heavy and it's pretty, it can get pretty dark. And like, I think that one thing that's sort of like people are craving this summer is the season is some more, like some more sex, some more, some more hookups, some more, like some, some more of that energy. I think that you're bringing some of that. And I know that we might see something later this season between you and a certain someone. So um, I think that people really actually liked that you shared that detail. And even though, even though it kind of feel, might feel cringe for you, like people liked it, your openness. Yeah. Well, I think at the end of the day, like we're really all just being ourselves on this show. And like, at first, as soon as I said it, I think I looked directly into a camera and go, oh my God. And Paige is sitting across from me. She goes, I'm into that too. And I was like, thank you. Okay. okay. Like, Power people numbers. Here. <laughs> yeah. So it's really funny to like watch those moments back and be like, damn, really no filter, but okay. <laughs> right. Totally. Um, so, I mean, you're, you're coming into this season and there's a really interesting dynamic among the women that, that, you know, we come in and it's, it's Lindsay and Danielle and the other girls. And there, there is that divide from, from years past. Um, and then you and Gabby come in as two newbies and, Obviously, Lindsay and Danielle, that gets really complicated. And they, there's a divide that happens there as Danielle goes to, towards the other side of things. And But you and Gabby didn't really seem to have to pick a side. You guys seem to kind of be able to, to strike up friendships on either side of the aisle, quote unquote. How are you guys able to do that, do you think? I think for us, it's because we, it's not fair for us to comment on the history of these friendships before we arrived, right? Like everything for us until the moment we arrive is just hearsay. And that doesn't stand up in a court of law. I know my mom's a lawyer. So like we we are out here making our opinions based on what we're seeing, what we're experiencing in real time. And um, I think, you know, if anyone ever asked us to comment on history, we'd just be like, we weren't here. Like you said this, this person said this. We take everything with a grain of salt and try to come in with kind of a fresh you know, outlook on it. Um, and we have really had the benefit. I mean, both Gabby and I can speak for both of us on this, where we have been able to form friendships with both of these women and we've gotten very close to both of them. Um, and some of that happened, you know, when they were still best friends and when they were still good. Um, you know, in, in early episodes, you'll see like Lindsay and Danielle have a little FaceTime. She's like, don't you love Sam? Like I knew you would. And like, it just goes to show like, we all have stuff in common. We could all be really best friends. Um, so, you know, as we look towards hopefully a resolution, you know, Gabby and I are looking forward to like having the four of us like running around the Hamptons together. Totally. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's interesting because you did get a taste of what that really special friendship, not was, I think is, but just right now yeah. is not. Um, but it also seems like you and you and Lindsay are particularly close. I feel like you guys really do hit it off. Like, I feel like it's, one of you at some point kind of re- referred to the other as like, just like the mini me version or just sort of the, like, yeah, you're, you're very yeah. similar. And, um, you know, I, I'm curious because I I also, I love Lindsay and Danielle, but there's this, there's this narrative get, that, that gets pushed about Lindsay of just not being a girl's girl, quote unquote. And, and you clearly were able to strike a really special friendship with her this summer, regardless of that narrative what do you make of that considering that you were able to create a great friendship with her 
You know, I keep wondering what the heck Lindsay ever did to everybody to make them all hate her so much. I mean, there there have been, I've been kind of waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like, what do I not know about her? Right. That's so bad. That's so evil. And I really like haven't had any personal real life experience with anything like that. Um, you know, I will say like watching her and Danielle navigate this fight has been a little bit hard because, you know, I think it's bringing out, you know, things in their friendship that like that maybe they've buried for a long time that are kind of sure. coming out. Um, but that's for them to deal with and and to experience. And, you know, I haven't, I, to me, like Lindsay has done nothing but take care of me. She's acted like such a big sister. Um, and I can say that wholeheartedly about Danielle too. I think, you know, we all know you don't see everything, but Danielle mm -hmm. and I have a very close friendship. She, you know, picks me up when I'm feeling down. She, her number one thing in a friendship is loyalty. And mm -hmm. I promise you like, that's where she stands. Um, so, you know, it, I really, I don't think Lindsay's evil. I don't think Lindsay's some big bad guy. I think, of I think she's a normal person and, you know, just being in all the drama because you have a big personality and you like, like to get involved in things is different from like being the reason for all the drama or, right. you know, just cause your name's in a headline doesn't mean you cause all the shit. So yeah, for I, sure. I think she gets a bad rap sometimes and I don't think it's, yeah. it's always fair. Definitely. So given that, given that you do have such a great relationship with both of them, honestly, like, were you aware? I mean, we see this week that, that she's going to, Lindsay's going to kind of come to you and then kind of try to talk some of that, that girl's night out and have your, some, some of your thoughts. Were you wary at all to even express some of, I don't know, your thoughts on the situation, given that like you were cultivating these friendships and how do you go about some of those moments, even now where you hear things from both sides like that, that it's, it's just, it's hard to play. It's hard to be in the middle, even though I know it's a, it's a worthwhile position to be in. It just, it must be tough. Totally. I think um, there's something unique about what we do filming this whole thing um, that, that really forces you to be in a perpetual state of like, I would never say something behind Danielle's back that I wouldn't say to her face Totally. because it's going to be on TV in 10 minutes. Yeah. So guess what? You're going to know anyway. And I will say like in tonight's episode, I um, there's a spot where I'm talking to Lindsay about it. I'm like, how are you feeling? And you know, that whole conversation doesn't make the episode things need to be cut, you know, for, for time and for clarity. Um, but you know, I, it's important to me, like I've been talking to Danielle about tonight's episode saying, I want you to know like that there are other things I have thoughts about and other feelings that sure. I have that, you know, aren't necessarily portrayed in this exact conversation. And I was like, ultimately I own everything I said, all of those words came out of my mouth, but you know, about our friendship and you know, where we're at in real life. And you know, that, my goal for all of this is to find a resolution. Like I want us all to be best friends. I love you guys together when you're good. Um, and, you know, ultimately my hope is that my friendship with Danielle and my friendship with Lindsay can coexist until they have their own resolution. Mm. And then we can all, you know, party in the Hamptons together. Which, which knock on wood is going to happen. I, I'm, I'm team, I'm team reconcile. Um, Me too. So I interviewed Gabby a couple of weeks ago and she just spoke so highly of you and, and how much of a like instant connection that you two had as the two new women in the house and that that, that has ma been maintained and that you're just really great friends. And given that, given that you are you kind of you guys were kind of like buddy buddy this this summer, what do you what do you make about her, her sort of struggle to connect with Sierra and vice versa? Like what do you make of that? What did you witness in person last summer that kind of informed what was going on there? Sierra will be the first person to say this to herself. She's extremely guarded. And Gabby and I are not like that. Gabby and I are kind of like, we always say like, I always joke, like innocent until proven guilty. Like, I love you <laughs> until you give me a reason to not sure. love you. Sure, yeah, yeah. So like, I say like, I love you to everyone all the time. And people are like, oh, that means you don't mean it. No, I love you. I want to be your best friend. I want to like snuggle with you and, you know, make <laughs> you mine. But like, if you are not interested in receiving that, then like, fine, do you. Um, and I think, you know, it's really unfortunate because Gabby is one of the best friends I've ever had. She's extremely loyal. She will like sit there with you. If you are spiraling about something, she never gets tired of being your friend. I love that. Um, and it is something so special and I'm so grateful for our friendship. And I just was a little bit disappointed because I think Sierra made a very early decision on on who Gabby was as a person based on like what she had gathered from her observations. 
Um, but there wasn't a ton of effort there to kind of see what was beyond that. And that judgment like persisted then throughout, you know, the course of the summer. And I just know that if she knew Gabby the way I knew Gabby, and if she sat there, you know, in the middle of the night with Gabby, like I do, that there's so much more to her to like know and love. Um, and I just think it precludes what could have been a great friendship. Hmm. And does, does that, is that your experience with Sierra as well? Like, do you feel like you have were able to connect with her or do you kind of feel the same as Gabby? I had a lot of trouble in the beginning connecting with Sierra. Again, I, I bring the love to you. Yeah. Like it is hand delivery, white glove service. Like I, I want to hug you. I want to like know your deepest, darkest. Like I want to like <laughs> tell you my deepest, darkest. That for me is how I connect with people. And Sierra has like a very different way of approaching relationships. Right. And so I, in the beginning was like, oh my God, this girl doesn't like me. Like this girl instantly, I'm like, she thinks I'm annoying. Um, and maybe she did. I mean, listen, that happens. Um, but you know, it, it took a little bit of warming up, but like, I mean, you'll see there are little things throughout the show where I'm just kind of like, ah, that's us like loving each other. Like she'll come and like kiss me on the forehead before she leaves for the, like at the end of the weekend. Okay. That's big. Yeah. Little things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And she like warmed up to me and opened up to me about some things that were going on in her life this summer that um, I think she and Gabby didn't have the chance to connect on. And so I think, you know, I had a little bit of an easier time connecting with her than Gabby did. Um, but in fairness, you know, Sierra didn't share with me any like negative judgments necessarily that like persisted right. throughout the summer. And I think she just, we had a little bit more of a concerted effort between us, I think, to build a connection. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas she and Gabby didn't really have that opportunity. Right. Totally. And you know, when, when you're, when you're new to one of these shows, I think, you know, especially when you're doing interviews like this, it's, it's, you have to kind of like latch on to certain things that, that you kind of be able to break out with or that stand out. And one of those early moments for you was kind of this weird interaction with you and Maya, where, you know, she, she talked about how you talk, you know, you're kind of a blabber mouth or that she was, that was what she was telling you. And then we didn't see you guys. But we heard you get emotional about that. And it was kind of just a really interesting kind of really early moment to have, I think on the show. And I'm curious what you thought of how that played out and how you think about that, that moment now. So I, one of the things that I always say about this, because a lot of people want to know like what, what really happened is um, it was to me, like, very almost like insightful that this was like the one thing that she wanted to talk to me about. Right. Because that's something that I've heard my whole entire life, something that has been such a deep rooted and long-term insecurity of mine. And I was like, there are so many buttons with me that you could push, but there's only one that will make me cry. And it's that Mm. one. And, um, I think a lot of people are like, that was so mean of her. She didn't have to do that. But I'll say until the day I die, there's only one room in that camera or in that house that doesn't have cameras. And she picked that one to pull me aside in. And it's not a coincidence. Maya yeah, is telling. so supportive of me. You know, she went through this newbie thing only a year ago. Yeah. Since the show started airing, I'm getting texts from Maya all the time. How are you doing? How are you feeling about this? Like she's supportive and she's a good friend to me. Um, and so even in the moment, like maybe you had to be, maybe you had to be there, um, which no one was. <laughs> Not even but, the camera, right. <laughs> right, exactly. Like maybe you had to be there, but like from the very moment that it happened, I knew that it wasn't antagonistic. It was, I'm trying to like, make sure you have a heads up of what's going on, like how people are like feeling and talking about this, because if like, I can then make educated, informed decisions about like how I'm behaving and how I'm talking to people. Um, and I think she didn't want me to end up in a situation where like I had to find out in a harder way, um, or maybe a less nice way. You know, I think, I also think that there was sort of a read between the lines there of like, we're on TV and this is how the show is filmed and be careful with just, just, just be aware of of sort of how you're carrying yourself, just in not that like talking a lot is a bad thing. It's a bad way to carry yourself. But I think that there was sort of that element of it as well. Totally. And sometimes, honestly, I need to hear that. Like I try to be self-aware all the time, but when you're drinking and you're in that environment and you're all excited, like it's very easy to kind of like lose track of what's going on and just get excited and like be talking. But like, if I'm talking over people, if I'm like dominating the conversation, like it's important for me to, like, I want to be checked to make sure that like, this feels like an equal friendship between me and other people. And I'm not just like taking over all the time. Totally. Um, so I think too, like, it's a helpful check for me in like an, a lesson in self-awareness. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, the mid-season trailer dropped 
today. And um, I was at the summer house from your party and I saw you getting a little cozy with a certain someone named Corey. Oh, and sneaky. So, you know, and we see we see you guys, you talk about it in the trailer. So it's, it's a thing that happens at some point this summer. Where do, does that, is that an instant spark between you two guys? We saw him on Winter House, but clearly he kind of comes in with, with, the, with a bang this, this, this summer. Yeah. Um, I was instantly drawn to him. Um, I mean, forget the way he looks like that's a, that's a good start for me. Um, but just his energy is like enormous. Yeah. It fills a space. It fills a room. And I think you can even read that on camera, right? Definitely. Like he definitely comes in hot and like, that's usually me. Like I'm usually running into a room and being like, this is my house now. And I like, he's like the sun, like people want to be in his, like around him. Like, he, like he breathes life into yeah, a it's room. Easy to see and, that for sure. Yeah. And you can feel it. Like when you're there, like I always like joke, like the first half of the summer, there was a lot of kind of like grueling hard conversations between longtime friends and like really like hard stuff. And I'm always like, Corey, like brought summer to the Hamptons. Like yeah. it, it changed the trajectory of what we were doing, I think. Um, and for me, like that is what I'm drawn to. And I think, you know, we kind of found a little bit of that energy match in each other and it was just so organic, so easy. It's like not something you have to work for. Oh uh, yeah. That, that's, I mean, again, I'm excited to see that. I think that that's and having that sort of element to the show, it's been missing for the first seven episodes. And I think yeah. that having some of that moving forward is going to bring summer should be fun. You know, it should bring some of yeah. that fun, that fun back. Um, and Corey's fun. <laughs> Corey's, it seems very fun. Exactly. <laughs> um, so is is that something that we're going to see like prolonged with you two? Yes. Um, okay. For the, you know, next several months of television, you will see us um, start to start to develop a relationship. And, you know, in the beginning, it was kind of like, what is this? Is it casual? Because like, we're not sure we trust this guy. Um, is it, <laughs> you know, like, am I going to need to like, avoid getting hurt? Um, but very quickly, I felt very safe with him. And that's unusual for me. But I, like, from the very beginning, I felt like, not only did he not like mind that I was like big and loud and all over the place, like he loved it. Um, and it gave me permission to be like the me that I'm most happy, like in like the skin that I'm most comfortable mm, in. So and nice. um, yeah, it's really, it was really special. And, and I always say, I feel so lucky that we have all of this like immortalized, like who in a relationship gets to look back at like the first time they met the first kits, like all of these amazing moments. Um, just like time stamped on the internet. Yeah, forever. that's really like, nice. That's really special. Totally. So are you guys still together? Are you still dating? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome, yeah. Sam. It, it, it's like, it's kind of like finding love in a hopeless place, you know? It's yeah, like- Nope, literally. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I kissed a lot of frogs um, in my day and like even in the summer. And then, you know, I think after that, you know, after Tim kind of like ghosted and like, I was like, okay, what's wrong with this guy? There was like kind of a week where I was like, that's it. I'm doing a hard reset sure. on my dating life. Sure. I need to like, like figure out what I'm doing. I'm going to be single. I'll keep dating my roster. And then Corey walks in and everything changes. That's wild. It's truly yeah. wild. So, I mean, before I let you go, I do have to ask another person that you brought around, Josh, we went, went viral oh, yeah. for the Madonna of it all. He was, we, I think like the week before he had been on Summer House and then Madonna posts a picture with him or something. <laughs> what did you, what was your instant reaction to that? Were you like, oh my God, now I'm like spit sisters with Madonna. Yeah, well, I was like, first of all, who gets to say, like, that's the coolest thing that's ever happened to the guy I rejected. <laughs> Like mostly those guys are like, oh, well, that sucks. Now this guy has got Madonna. I'm like jealous of him. I was like, oh, okay. Like, cool. Do you get like private performances? Like what, what are the perks that come with that? Um, but I think, you know, Josh is such a good guy. Like we're friends. We were DMing mm -hmm. the other day and, you know, I was just like, if this is true, you are a baller, sir. Like that is badass. Like I, like who gets to say like Madonna wanted my leftovers. You took it, you're taking it in stride. I think it's the best I'm, way to take it. Yeah, this is the cool, I, this is one of the cooler things that's happened to me in my dating life. It's amazing. 
It's, it's, it's like what you said earlier about Lindsay, how like just because your name's in the headline doesn't mean that you're part of the drama. Like your name was like in these headlines because he's now with, it's it's just funny. It's yeah. I was honored. I was like, I can't believe you included me in the story. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> for addressing that I was here first. Cool. Right. Well, but also the, the timing was so, so crazy. I feel like the episode had just aired, you know? Literally, so I was like, okay, you've got a really good publicist or that the uh-huh. universe is the timing was very, yep, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then last question for you, you know, You've, you've experienced filming, you're now experiencing airing and airing back, but the last sort of big beast to tackle is the reunion. And that's, that's just, it's a whole other situation. You bring up, you, again, you drudge up the past and we all, we talk about things even more. What are you most looking forward to either for yourself or for another one of the relationships in the house at the reunion to hopefully be resolved? Um, I mean, listen, top of mind for everyone, I think, is Danielle and Lindsay's friendship. That is something that has been weighing on all of us as a group. Um, And particularly, I think me and Gabby, because we're friends with both of these ladies and we love them so much and they love each other so much. Um, So that is top of mind um, for hoping that gets resolved at the reunion. I think for me, like, I'm just excited to like be out in the world with Corey and, you know, get to kind of show people what we're like, because you watch us kind of form this bond together. And then the summer ends and, you know, we have a lot, like we visit each other. We do new year's Eve together. We do Valentine's day together. And you guys don't get to see that because it happens after the summer ends. Um, but you know, we're in a place right now where like, I'm, I'm leaving the summer being like, I don't know what we're going to be. Maybe we'll visit each other. And now I'm coming to the reunion. And I'm like, he's my boyfriend. Right. Like, that feels cool. Yeah. Um, and like, we're just, we're happy. Like we're, we have fun together. So I'm excited to like, hopefully bring some of that like light, happy energy to the reunion and let people kind of see where we're at now. Cause it's really special for us. I think that will be welcome energy. I think people are going to be excited to see you guys and yeah, I mean, any, you know, the reunion, I, I can go so many different directions. And it's, I think we're all hoping for that one direction, but yes. we'll see, you know. <laughs> we are. I think, you know, I, I have faith that it's going to yeah, all work good, out. Good, good. Well, Sam, this is so much fun to get to talk to you. Um, again, I'm loving you on the show. I can't wait for the rest of this season and um, hopefully see you around for another another one this coming summer. Yes. And tap me at the premiere next time. I, oh, I will. I will. Let I will, me know. I will. <laughs> I will. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Bye. You too. Thanks for tuning in to We Should Talk. I hope you enjoyed the interview. You can find out more about In The Know at inthenow.com. You can follow me, Gibson John, at Gibsonoma on Twitter and Instagram. And you can listen to all of our interviews, past and future, by searching We Should Talk wherever you get your podcasts. Hope to see you next time.